Gentlemen, I never thought I'd say this, but I missed you. And how great is it to be in the theater at the Carnegie? So you think about the fact that we had this show 98% prepared for our two June dates, and then this pandemic hits, and we went through every imaginable conversation about salvaging suits. Could we do it virtually? Could we postpone it and do it later in the year? And, you know, John, I know you said on multiple occasions that it's all about the fan experience, not just for us, but for the people here and the intimacy and the theater and the uh, environment that this creates and how we feed off of the crowd and the crowd feeds off of us. You can't replicate that. There's just no way to do that other than actually have a live performance. So while we're not going to be doing Suits at Rock in 2020, um, you know, our hearts and our minds are with our fans. We've been incredible in supporting, as you said, doing this show for 12, 13 years. And we're gonna be back. And we're gonna be back next year and we're already starting to think about the theme and the songs and the guest suits. And, but uh, it's, uh, it's been quite a journey. Uh, something we weren't prepared for, but we're not gonna miss a beat going into 2021. Yeah, the optimist in me kept thinking something's gonna happen here that's gonna let us do this. Uh, at first, even in June, because we waited until April to decide that we couldn't do it in June. I moved it back to August and the first weekend in September and kept thinking, well, boy, you know, maybe something's gonna happen. And you just keep looking at what's happening. And it, uh, this has been such an experience in joy on the part of us, the musicians and the audience. And what an awful, punctuation to all that joy would it be if somebody had got had gotten sick right. from coming to a suit show That's so true. the eventual decision to cancel was an easy decision to make it wasn't an easy decision to swallow but it it's what we had to do it, yeah and you know we talk about how important the folks that come to see suits are in fact as far as i'm concerned they are suits and that's why a live stream wouldn't really work because our a big chunk of the suits couldn't be there because now they may be there and you know virtually but uh, you know without without having the folks that come to see us perform and are have become really good friends of ours over the years they're as much a part of this as we are and you know golly I miss I miss you guys and I miss all the people in suits but I also miss all those folks out there you see see a lot of the same faces out there every year. Some of them come to two shows, and boy, every one of them has a smile on their face that I don't think probably it'll, would, would go away for weeks. Yeah, you know? we figured out pretty early that the suits that rock weren't only the people on the stage. You don't, you don't have to be playing music to, to rock, and it's kind of like the tree falling in the forest with nobody to hear it. Playing the music is fun, but uh, you need the audience, and and they are our associates and our friends and our families and their suits and they rock. One thing to think about is is uh, it's bad that we're not playing this year, but next year could turn out to be the biggest party of all time. <laughs> no, because if, <laughs> if you it. think about it, if this is over by then, you know people have gotten the vaccines, people are not afraid to go out. Oh my God. But one thing that I've always been most proud of with this group is that we've never lost sight of why we do this. And the fact that we had to cancel the shows this year has an impact on students and you know, the Covington school system who benefit from arts education program. That's another reason why we're here having this conversation is that we want people to remember that and hopefully that they'll continue to be supportive uh, even then this year where we're not going to have a live show. And, and I didn't realize, you know, everything kind of seemed to shut down uh, in March, but the arts education didn't. There's been virtual programming and, and planning into this next fall. There will certainly be the virtual part where that's necessary and some in person. So all the expenses of providing the arts education are continuing without the, uh, the funding that the Suits at Rock show provides. So. Uh, we're hoping that uh, our virtual fundraiser in the month of August, of which this is a part, will be supported by our fans to uh, keep all that arts education going because it's, 
it's important to all the kids who wouldn't otherwise uh, get the arts in their daily curricula. Being able to come to our first rehearsal and stand here on this stage uh, with all the suits and working through all the songs, it's really going to have a surreal feeling like we're waking up from a really long nightmare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really looking forward to that. Yeah, you know, I, I keep reading commentaries about, you know, how this is going to affect people long term. And, you know, I know for me, just all the things that you took for granted, all the things that, you know, and when you've done this for 12 years, like we have, right. you, you do kind of, it's not that you take it for granted because it's always a joy. I don't think it, it'll, it, it ever hit me like it has this year, you know, just how much it, it means and how much I miss it. You don't know what you've got until it's gone. That's exactly right. It sounds yeah, like a song lyric. I think it is, actually. <laughs> sounds like a song. It's interesting because you think about our, our current roster of people. We've got a lot of people that have been here for a long time. And as big a part of our, of our lives as this is, because John's actively involved in this all year, whether he's thinking about it or doing something, but, but the rest of us are involved in it for six months at least. Uh, you can imagine, uh, I mean, for all the people who have been there every year, coming to vocal rehearsals, coming to regular rehearsals, to not do this and have, to have planned your life around those dates, which is an amazing thing about the suits, if people are willing to do that. This has really been a, a, a big bump in the road for everyone. You know, it is kind of nice to have a year where you're going, I don't really have anything to do. It's good for a while. <laughs> yeah, for it a got while, a lot of pictures scanned. But, uh, you know, it'd be yeah. nice to be playing some music when the guys. Oh. Yeah, you know, it's kind of <laughs> like, it's almost kind of like uh, fast forward to when we're all in the nursing home watching videos of ourselves <laughs> playing music. It's kind of like, that's John, that's what you've been doing for, for a month. But I will tell you what hit me in the gut a couple of times was, uh, you know, on my Outlook calendar at the office. And I dutifully put all of the Suits That Rock rehearsals yep, in my calendar too. and it kept popping up reminding me <laughs> oh, I, I had know. Suits That Rock rehearsal yeah, tonight. Torture me. And after the third time I went and deleted the rest yeah. of them. I, I, said, oh, the this, I just can't handle can't this anymore. This. <laughs> no, because it kept reminding me every day that, you know. Well guys, I would like to drink to the possibility that if the four of us have the misfortune of ending up in a nursing home together, that we do it together. Amen. That we are in the same here, nursing here, home. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. But this place is just, it, just sitting here on this stage is amazing. Because, you know, you can close your eyes and you see all the people that would fill this theater and the energy. I mean, there's just nothing like peeking behind the curtain and oh, looking yeah. out here at the crowd before the show starts and all that energy, yep. and, and yeah. these are all people individually and collectively that love what we do, but they love the Carnegie, they support what the Carnegie represents, um, the sponsorships, the ticket sales. Um, again, that's in part why the four of us are here having this conversation is that we're asking those of you who are watching that uh, we hope that you'll find it in your heart. I know there have been lots and lots of requests to give and support various organizations, but doesn't matter how little or how much if you're willing to contribute and help support arts education and help us continue you know to have the impact that we have um, in this community uh, we're all in this together I mean that's certainly been a rallying cry throughout the pandemic but it, it's just and the four of us we haven't the four of us have not physically been together since early March mm -hmm. at your house, Paul, when we were doing vocal yeah, rehearsals. Yep, right. March 3rd. Right. We did do the March and we 3rd. Did In fact, the... I, one of the things, Greg, you were talking about reminders is I had this picture that was uh, popping up uh, that I had taken. You know, we always take that group yeah. photo. And I would see that and I was like, and we had no idea. No one had no clue when we took that picture. Everybody's face is so happy. We're so right. into the moment of the vocal rehearsals and thinking about the upcoming suit show and literally Ten days later, the world changed. Yep. Yeah. You and, know. You know. And, and Kevin, you mentioned a couple of things about about the Carnegie. You know, I looking out, and for me, being here back in the day when this facility here had a leaky roof and a tree in the middle, and just to see what the Carnegie is today versus what it was when I first came on board here in 2000. Um, and, the, and the transformation of not just the Carnegie, but this entire block. I'll never forget walking around 
the, the, uh, the street with uh, Otto Budig, and he and I were, he was chair and I was vice chair of the board, and we were walking around the block um, looking at potential acquisition places. And right next door where now the Eva Ferris Education Center is, uh, was the biggest crack house in Northern Kentucky. And the Covington police were so happy when we finally went ahead and raised the money to buy that place. And then, you know, expanding the campus and expanding behind us. And, and now you look at this place and in the Carnegie, if you've not been here, if you're watching and you, for whatever reason you haven't, come down here. This is a true jewel. There are only a few of these Carnegie right. libraries left in the entire country that still have a theater. Uh, and it's just, it, it's just a, it's a beautiful place. It does a lot of good work. And I, you know, Kevin, you mentioned it before, you know, the cause, even though sh suits aren't playing this year, the cause didn't go away. Right. And, and it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing. You know, we had a good show coming up too. I've had a great cast of, of people, and I suspect that cast will continue into next year's and roll right into the So, John, are, 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 are we going to have to revisit the theme this year? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In my darker moments, I've had some ideas for <laughs> themes, but yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to retain a lot of the set list that we had planned for this year, but uh, we may have to have a few songs tossed in like uh, Paranoia. Paranoia, yeah. or Paranoid, the Ozzy Osbourne oh, uh, boy. Uh, song. Uh, there's um, who's uh, going to bite off the bat head? Killing me. Well, you know, it's funny. One of the songs <laughs> that I was going to be fortunate enough to sing this year, "Waiting on a Sunny Day." I kind of feel like that's kind of our theme right now. Yeah, that is right. really We're good. waiting yeah. on a sunny yeah. day, you know, and it's it's definitely a good theme. Um, Sing a little bit for us. Yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> hey, you assume I can remember the lyrics, Paul. <laughs> Golly. Yeah, by the time this thing got canceled, uh, or at least rehearsals got canceled, we hadn't gotten real deeply into the uh, memorizing lyrics point. We were just trying to figure out chords and, and who was doing what. So. Well, he's like a steel trap for lyrics, though. I yes. we were, see oh, yeah. like him. Yeah, but we were still sitting at the, at the rehearsals. We were still at the point where everybody had their little binder, and we all had our lyrics in front of us, and you could see everybody turning their pages, you know. Uh, the good news is, is we outlawed music stands, I guess, after year one, when I know I probably knocked over about seven or eight of them. Actually, it was year two, because I've just seen the pictures. From okay, year so two, year two, we outlawed music stands, because I kept running into them and busting people's guitar stuff, but, you know. <laughs> I think we're meandering into oblivion here. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the bourbon does. <laughs> That's what does. we do. <laughs> That's what bourbon does to you. What do we want to? What do we want to wrap up with? I think What's the audience message? should do a poll on whether we should do Rock Lobster or not. <sighs> oh, I can't let it go. I'm you teasing. Can't. I know. Just I know. because it was the song <laughs> that was a hit when you were 14, Greg. Oh, it does not make it a good song. My favorite <laughs> part of that song is the background vocals. Oh, they're awesome. Mine is the ending. For those of you in the audience, yeah. you're getting a glimpse of some of the uh, yeah. creative yeah. tension within the executive <laughs> committee when we talk about what songs we actually want to perform at Suits at Rock. And uh, just a little backstory here, uh, you know, Greg is the avant-garde member of the executive committee musically, and he's always pushing the envelope, that's fair to say, right? <laughs> with songs that might not be mainstream popular, Billboard Top 20 or, or whatever. Or maybe nobody likes them but him. But, <laughs> oh, but, but Paul and I just sit, I think it's actually perfect that the chairs, you and I are on the end, and these two are in the middle, and they just start to have at it and go back and yeah. forth. Um, about if we're their, talking meatloaf, though, I'm sorry, but yeah, I mean, yeah. you're going to go toe-to-toe. Yeah, we all to toe. have our, our meatloaf and our yeah. rock lobster. Right, it's, right. Yeah, and we, we need the others to... to yeah. Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Oh, God. What a song. Tom, <laughs> what a half a song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> yo. Tom and, Brenneman was, was awesome. Yeah, he was song. great. He that was, that was, was a great good. ad. And yeah. there was nothing like ending the song three minutes early um, when the audience was like, what, what happened? Mm -hmm. but, uh, well, that was like 12 people in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> the other <laughs> four knew what it was, right? had no idea what that song oh, was. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's the joy that you generate, not just within yourself and with the people, but the, the audience, and, 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 and you see people. And you know, we're sitting here in the theater and I can envision all those folks that line up here 
along the stage and put their drinks up on the oh, stage yeah. and dance like crazy and, and have a great time. And you know, I just want to go out and give every single one of them a big hug. You oh, know? I know. It's like, you know. You actually don't need to do that. I think you are the, the single most touch suit um, <laughs> that performs up here on stage. Yeah. And, and we have the pictures and video to back oh, that up, right, John? Oh, absolutely. Okay, yeah. I've seen a zillion of them. I'm, a, I'm scared to <laughs> death of this video. <laughs> they can't keep their hands off Did of you. Did you say touch but They're texture. only human. Yeah, the well, most, right. uh, he touches them, they touch, <laughs> they touch him. So the important information to how do you support the arts community and, and the arts education that the Carnegie does without Suits That Rock is uh, there will be an opportunity to donate in all of these posts in the month of, of August. And uh, all you need to do is click on the donate button and uh, it will lead you, I suspect, to the Carnegie website where all that can happen. Uh, and we, We'd like to thank all of the people who've supported this event over the last 12 years, and uh, we miss you all in this 13th year. But uh, we'd like to close by toasting all of you and saying, rock on for the Carnegie kids. Rock on for the rock Carnegie on. kids. See you in 2021.